bathed in water. <laughs> because that's the thing even with Paul is he went in and, and you see there in the book of Acts later in the later part of the book of Acts. It's kind of a long book, but it's a great book because it explains a lot of stuff. Right? And uh, even Paul was there and, and uh, they meet these people. And they have been fully baptized in the word of God through Elijah's teaching. Hey, we even met Elijah or John the Baptist and got baptized through the water. But I have never heard of the Holy Spirit. What is this thing that you're speaking of? Oh, that's because you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me explain to you when God says, hey, there's a mystery that's been held from secret all through the Christian time, and one day God will unveil this mystery. Hey, did you know that the spirit of the living Christ lives in you? Holy moly. <laughs> that's, the, that's the mystery, see? That's the thing. Now, does Jesus live in heaven? Well, yes, our, our Father lives in heaven. But as Jesus says, I shall return. I shall return. Now, that's the thing. If anybody tells you Jesus hasn't returned in flesh, then they lie. But in the same way, if anybody says to you, Oh, there's the Messiah. There he is over there out in the field. Or, hey, come on over into my house. Here he is. No. No, that's the thing. The living God, the Christ, he says, I'm going back to heaven to give the gift. The Holy Spirit. The breath of God. The, the, the fire. Right? And, and so he drops the fire down. Right? That's the thing. It's all right here. Now let's start our read. Genesis chapter 8, verse 6. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried upon the earth. See, right? Joe, where you been, Satan? I've been all over the earth flowing to and fro. Okay, raven black, and you gotta understand, hey, this story is so old. This is the thing. This is what they had. And this is what they had was good enough because Jesus Christ is written right in here. And, they, and back then, this is what they had to, to believe in. Now you got a bunch of like Indian tribe, you know, native people, uh, very old, ancient people. Okay, and they're all sitting around the campfire like they would. These are nomads, right? And they got like Indian tents, but only there they had a different style tent, right? So I'm going to be sitting around the campfire. Let me tell you how this thing works. There was this black bird, and he began to flow to and fro on the earth, seeking, right? Seeking dry land. Seeking parched stuff. God says to Satan, Where you been, Satan? I've been on the earth seeking, going to and fro, testing all the men of the earth. Oh, how come you didn't test Job? Well, because you put all these angels around him. And all this stuff. Remember, Satan comes to Jesus out in the thing. Hey, jump off this temple, and the angels will come and get you. Jesus says, no, we're going to follow every word of God. I am not protected by the angels. You have free will to test me every way you can. But don't take my life. God told you, don't take my life. They ended up taking Jesus' life. That's the thing, Cain and Abel. Don't be like Cain, who slew his brother, who killed the image of God. You know, that's the thing. 
We live by every word of God. Sends forth this raven. First. Right? Jesus comes. He sparks straight in. There is no life. Every man on earth is a liar. And there's no truth in them. Because no man on earth has ever heard the truth before. It's all been secret. It's all been mystery. They've heard half truths. And then they took the truth and transformed it into a lie. Well, these are old people, right? And we're sitting around the campfire. I'm going to tell you a story, son. And he sends forth the dove. He sends forth the raven. And it went to and fro to the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from, from him. To see that the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot. And she returned to him to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and, and took her and brought her into the ark with him. Now, I want to explain one thing though. As we see, there's water all over the earth and everything's been destroyed. There is, and when you notice Nephilim, they were there with them and afterward. If you go back and you study history and ancient history and, and from all over the world, something they have in common. And Satan, right? The, the, the raven is going to and fro back and forth all around the earth. They create a, a mighty men of renown, or giants, or Nephilim, the fallen ones, right? Every society around the earth was doing something, sacrificing babies, sacrificing people to the gods. Do you think God was happy with that? And that's the thing. The, the moment that the conquistadors come in from Spain and, and to meet the Aztecs, you know, smallpox killed them all. God's word killed them all. That was the thing. We're going to go and, and release all these people from, from the bondage that the Satan has put on them. They also have many things in common. The worship of snakes. Their, their mighty God thing is usually a snake. Right? Another thing they have in common is they worship of the sun or, or the Ishtar. The, the great star. Right? And, and all those things were, were a confusion. All that stuff what was creating hurt, pain, and, and suffering. Fear, torment, horror. All across the earth. Right? You got the Aztecs building and you go to Babel. Hey, they, they built these big towers. You look at the pyramid stuff. They're, they're giants. Creating these giant towers so that they can climb up to the heavens and, and make a challenge to God. Right? That's the thing. God wanted to destroy the, the image Satan had set up. That's an image of hate. It's an image of anger. It's an image of unfaith, of uh, um, uh, unforgiveness. Right? It's an image of, of abuse. You go back to the ancient history and all that and all the groups of people living in, in, in an abusive state. In an abusive state. God wanted to free them from the darkness and, and that abusive state. So he covers them all in darkness, covers them all in, in water to deliver them out of that. So that's the thing with Jesus Christ, that there is repentance. He says, I come to bring repentance. And I don't call them, come to call righteous with the sinners. And I call them to repentance of their sins. That's the thing with God's word, being truth and how powerful God's word is. And the power behind it. So he puts out, so he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him, right? He waited another seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark. 
And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him anymore. In the 600th, in the first year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the waters were dried from the earth. Right? So we go, at the first year in the sixth month, we go a couple of months, you know, isn't it amazing? Kind of like the day of Pentecost. Jesus dies, rises up from heaven, but says, go to Galilee and wait there until, what, the day of Pentecost. And then the Spirit came on them. Okay? So he went, and he sees that they were dried from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Now, to, that's the thing. Now, we go through circumcision, right? Co the, the covering of, of a man's most sensitive place, okay? What if the covering of the circumcision of the heart, the human being's most sensitive place, right? So Noah now removes the covering of the ark. Same thing, if you go in ancient Judaism time, you know, they have these great big giant scrolls and all the Bibles written on it. And they put a cover to keep that scroll from being dirtied or, or messed up. I mean, it's sacred. That cover, that cover that they would use to put over the scrolls is called a foreskin. And it was usually uh, like the lamb, uh, skins of a lamb. You know, I'm not trying to be nasty or gross. I'm trying to say Satan has deceived your mind to make this a nasty, gross thing. So I got to take the, 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 the foreskin off. Now the word of God and open it so that you can understand it. Holy cow. Now we're going to circumcise our heart. That's the thing with Jesus Christ. He would never ask you to go into a place of pain and suffering if he didn't already know he was going to meet you there in that place of pain and suffering to deliver you out. Right? To deliver you out. Same like this. A friend of mine told me a wonderful story and I want to share it with you. It's like this. You're driving in the car, and Jesus is driving. He's going 55 down the highway. And he says, open that door and jump. Right? Jump. We're going 55 miles an hour down the highway. And you want me to open the door and jump out? Yeah. Nope. I can't do it. I will get hurt. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Jump out that door. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Hey, man, we're going like 55 miles an hour down the highway. I don't know. Everything in my body, my guts, and my instincts says, if I jump out that door, I'm going to break every bone in my body. I'm going to be hurt and destroyed. I don't know. It says, jump. Okay. So you jump out the door. And the moment you jump out the door, there he is to grab you. See? Just trust me. See? Just trust me. And that's what it comes down to. Really, all we got to is to be able to trust in God's word. Living in our heart already. Living in our heart already. Because that's the thing. It is <coughs> recognizing that, 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 that image. We can't be Jesus. He, Jesus was Jesus. So we could be we. So we could be us. 
And that's why I don't bow down to that image. Don't try to be Jesus because you'll hurt yourself. And you'll bring shame and guilt and suffering into your life. No, what you can do is trust Jesus for what he has done. You can trust Jesus. Just as here, Noah and his eight people trusted God's word. And the deliverance that came from the trust of God's word from Noah, man, we got like seven billion people on the earth today. And since Noah, seven trillion people have died. That's where God says. When they come out of the boat, God blesses them, right? They, they, they have the sweet, savoring offering. And he blesses them. Not just you, but your children and their offspring forever and ever. So that's what Jesus came to do, is restore the truth. The truth, you know, to destroy the, the temple worship and restore God's holy image. That's why Jesus died to the law and puts death to the law. God made man, God made human beings, and God made you just the way you were supposed to be. And if it brought you to a broken state, it's because he knew you were going to find him there in that broken state. Now that you have found him, can you trust him? Can you trust him? Because wasn't it he who pushed you out the door and did not allow you to be destroyed? He didn't allow you to be destroyed. The name of Noah is rest. The name of Noah is comfort. What's that great name that Jesus is going to give you? Rest! And comfort. I'm going to send you the comforter. The comfort. Rest. Peace. Right? This rest and peace comes through our love. And our love for each other. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh, in the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. And then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark and your wife, and you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, the birds, the animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him, and every beast, and every creeping thing, and every bird, and everything that moves on the earth went out by families, by families, from the ark, by families. So that's the thing, you know, is Jesus Christ, and you go to the book of uh, Exodus later, and the Passover lamb, everybody gets you a lamb, and the one lamb is not only good enough for you, but the entire family, and if you got any leftovers, that lamb is also good enough for the neighbors. And every family has one lamb. Huh. You mean, as Jesus Christ being the Passover lamb, has enough power in his blood to, to cover over the whole family? Yes. 
so do you mean that my faith in Jesus Christ can save my unbelieving family? Not just your family, but your neighbors as well. <laughs> what? That's the thing. Sometimes as Christians and people or Muslims or whatever religion, we, we got to have you bow down to our set of beliefs. But Jesus says, my lamb, my blood is for the family. The, the, the family. Right? Abraham had two sons, both Isaac and Ishmael. And that's the thing. For the family. God's grace and mercy is for all of them. Right? For, for the family. They all come out with their families. That's the thing. We've got thousands of years of DNA stored up in us that make us up of who we are. You know, it's kind of like there in the Exodus, you know, when they go into the land of, of Canaan with, with, J with Joshua and Caleb. Do you want to take, you know, only your loins or, or the fruit of your loins or the fruit of all your loins and your ancestors and your children and they all go with you? Right? That's the thing. We, are we so selfish to think, oh, only God has forgiveness for us alone? But, but no, it's through our faith. That's why each family and each people all around, they have a designated chosen lamb set up by God. And they, they're always the person. Maybe it's you. Speaking of Jesus, speaking of God, speaking of love, bringing together.